What's up guys, this is Foden here at uh, Ultra2K and I'm just going to show you about hiding objects within Cinema 4D. Um, the reason I'm sharing this tutorial is, uh, sorry, is because um, when you get to the stage where your Cinema 4D project is overloaded with models and whatnot, um, you're going to want to hide some things. For example, the light in here. Now I've hidden these because if I there we go. They that took a bit of time, about a few seconds, just for the lights to be recognised. But if I now scroll through, it's a bit laggy, a bit slow. So by turning the lights off, it just makes a quicker workflow, basically. And the same thing with some, you know, um, other aspects like all these bits here you don't need if you wanted to animate something. The train, you know, here. Um, so basically to hide them, I'm just going to explain these little buttons here. Now everything in this project is now visible um, in the editor and you've got two little buttons here, I don't know what this button is on the left, I don't know if it is a button, but um, these two little buttons next to each object. The top one is what we can see in, you know, the, um, in this perspective view and the bottom one is what the render shows. So if I want to work quickly and I want the lights to be there and render, but I don't want to see them now, just to make it, you know, the workflow a bit quicker, you would hide the top ones. The top um the top circle because the top one is just what we see now. The bottom one is a render. And you click that until it's red. And that basically be, basically means no show, you know. So I turn the lights off, they're still there but I can't see them. Um, however, if I render it, they will be there, the lights will be effective because I haven't selected the bottom one. However, if I select both of these, that means they will not be rendered and I can't see them now. However, they're still in the comp like, they're still in the, um, the scene. Um, so that's basically what both of these mean. And there's a few little tips and tricks you can do. For example, when I'm rigging a character, if I just open one up now, hopefully a rigged one, I'll show you what I mean. Because sometimes things can, can just get in the way and it is really annoying. Alright, Ghosts, um, Merrick, Merrick, Merrick's got to be rigged. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll just go for an old Sandman or something. Because I know those ones are rigged. There we go. God, I haven't used these models in yonks. But yeah, basically, we've got the root here for the skeleton. Um, now I always, well, once I've created the skeleton and they're all bound and everything, I always hide the skeleton itself, just so it's not in the way. I mean, you can still move everything, just, you know, just not having this big old see-through skeleton in the way. Because uh, you want to you know what you see, because um, you don't want to make any mistakes in that. Because, that, you know, that will definitely throw your audience off. It happens all the time though. But, <laughs> but yeah, basically what you want to do is it acts as like a hierarchy structure. So if I click red here, everything below it will disappear. However, if I wanted, say, something like just the right arm to show, you will click that until it shows green. So that means, basically in like a, a formula type thing, it means Below the skeleton, everything is hidden apart from the right clavicle, which is showing, which is basically what is happening here. Um, say you just wanted the the elbow to show. What you would do is you would make the elbow show. Turn that off. Oh no, I, I, I'll do the, the the shoulder actually, just because it's a bigger bone. So we've got everything hidden apart from the shoulder, but then everything we below the elbow we want to hide as well. If that makes sense, that that's how the hiding structure works, um, especially with um, objects that are bound in a hierarchy structure, for example this. Um, but yeah, other little objects you can hide, say the... what's this? This is just null. Oh, that's just the controls. So yeah, I can actually just hide the model itself, but keep the bones. Take these off. So it's little things like that that you can use within Cinema 4D just to maybe get something out of the way so you can see what you're doing you know it does come in use but I always keep my skeletons to um, off but that's always the top button do not do the bottom one don't 
the skeleton doesn't render anyway, so you don't need to worry about the bottom one. But for some objects like this, I mean, there has been a few times when you use like um, a cube as a method of smashing a wall. And what you want to do is you want to hide that cube. So you'll grab, say this is a cube, you want to keep it visible, but you want to turn it off in the render. So then when you play the timeline through, you see the box or cube or whatever, smash the wall. But if you render it out, the wall will just smash by itself because the cube isn't shown. And that's sort of, uh, you know, the, the purposes that you can use for hiding objects within Cinema 4D. Now there is another way without these buttons and if you click on something, you right click you get a Cinema 4D tags compositing and then you click scene by camera Oops, that will turn it off, although it's visible in the viewer if you render it, it will not be shown and I'll show you the purpose of this, so we've got, we got these little buttons for like getting things out of the way, just hiding them temporarily and whatnot. But say I wanted to reflect something onto a model. So I'm just going to add a reflection onto all of these. Or just these ones actually, shall I? So all of these. Add a reflection and make it really reflective. So if I render that now, it won't really show anything because there's nothing reflecting. So I would create a sky and then I would create a HDR image. Um, so I'll go to create, load material preset, visualize materials, HDR, and just select this. Um, now, not everyone I know has this, but if you do, that's great. If not, Google HDRI pictures. You can save one and just load that in. And then I add that onto the sky. So as you can see, 3D world, we've got this big old image. So if I now render that, we can see that this background image is now reflecting onto our guy. But then we don't want this background with it. So if I ended up hiding these objects like that, there's no reflection. So that's the whole point of the compositing. You right click, Cinema 4D tags, compositing, and you check off scene by camera. That way, we can't see it. However, scene by refraction, scene by reflection, is seen by everything else apart from the camera. So if I now render that, we've just got our guy with the reflective background. And that's the use of the compositing tag, um, which is here. So you can do it either way, it depends on what you're trying to do. And these are just little things I've picked up on the way, and it is helpful. So I thought, you know, just let you guys know. Because um, it is a pain in the ass sometimes, you're not knowing how something works, and it's like, oh, God's sake. And you really want it. Uh, that has got to be one of the most frustrating things about editing. But, <laughs> but yeah. There are ways to fix it, and if I'm gonna know how to, you know, if I know how to do it, then I'll just share it, you know, because it's it is a channel that's teaching everyone Cinema 4D pretty much, even though I'm not a professional, but you know, I do try. <laughs> but yeah, there it is, guys. So please like and comment, and I'll see you next video. Peace.